make this like a second nature. Okay, I'm here, boop. You know, I don't have to look. See that? I just, I don't need to look when I'm playing drums. Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and on this video I'm going to show you how to finger drum on the keyboard and how to do it right, because anyone can do it right after this. So I had this request by quite a few of you guys how you can finger drum on the keyboard. And I actually want to share my story with you today because this is one of the things that completely changed the way I started producing music. Let's get this thing straight out of the way. The secret to do finger drumming and to do it easily and to do it right is to learn the GM drum map. I'm going to have some links down below and here it is. Feel free to pause the video and check it out, but you can find all this information very easily online. Now, I want to share with you how I got inspired to start finger drumming. Ever since I was a really young kid, I was always going to my local music store after my piano lessons, and I was really gazing at the synths and, you know, all the beautiful instruments that were there. But I will never forget this. One day, a blind person walks into the store and he talks to the guy that was working in the store and he says, can you give me some drums uh, on this keyboard? So he went like this and he started doing this. I can't remember how old I was, I was really, really young, but I watched him playing without being able to see what he was playing and I was completely blown away. Like, this sounded like a real drummer to me. Since then, I was like, okay, this is amazing. I have to learn to do this. And that's how I started learning how to finger drum on the keyboard. So, I wanted to share this story with you because I will forever be grateful to that blind person that walked into the store and started playing that day because that completely changed the way that I produce and the way that I play the drums and that's a skill that is really really important but now I'm going to show you how you can do this as well because it's not really that hard you don't really need to be a keyboard player to do this so like I said the key is to learn the GM mapping and you know, this thing extends to all the keys, basically. It's one of these protocols that manufacturers got together, like, you know, Yamaha, Korg, Roland, whatever. They agreed that in order to be able to run MIDI files on different keyboards, they needed to agree on a specific mapping when it came to drums. So, what was this agreement? C1, let's say that this is C1, I've transposed this so that it's easier for me to play and for you to see, but basically, C1 is your kick drum. And that's universal, I've never seen a library or an instrument not having the kick drum on C1. The next is the snares, okay? And the snares live here, in D1 and E1. So, these are the first things that you should learn. And I would say, when you're starting out, try and practice. Try and do... Maybe slowly first. Or... And this, most of the times, it's maybe like a rim shot. It depends on the library, but it's always like a harder hit. So if you're going to do like rolls, I would go for this note for D1. Now I want to say one thing straight away, it's very important that you have a good keyboard if you're going to do finger drumming. I wouldn't choose a hammer graded like uh, weighted keys like I have here because that actually makes it super hard to finger drum. But if you're a pianist, you can get away with that. If you know how to do your repetitions and all these things, that's fine, but if you're not a keyboard player, do yourself a favor and get a synth action keyboard, but please use a good synth action keyboard because dynamics for drums are really important. So we have kick drum, we have 
snares. Let's move on to the other element. We have the side stick, which is most of the times on C sharp one. And then we have a clap on D sharp one, which in this case, I don't have it because this is an acoustic drum kit, but some drum kits have it. In this case, I'm using the kit from Groove Agent, by the way. We have these things here. And as I said, you don't need to know all the elements. There is some percussion here. There are some kind of uh, shakers here, congas and all these things. It's good to know them. I know pretty much all of them, but I've been doing this for years. When you're starting out, I would say just start with the basics. You know, start with kick drum, snare, side stick, and then let's move to the cymbals. And the cymbals live here, okay? We have close hi-hat. That depends on the library, of course, but most of the times here you have two versions of a closed hi-hat. Okay, F sharp and G sharp. And then on A sharp or B flat, you have the open hi-hat. This is one of the tricks that you need to learn if you want to play acoustic drums especially. On most libraries, you can play this open hi-hat and it will ring for as long as you let it, you know, because it's a one-shot hit. It will just ring until it fades out. But what you can do, and that's actually very important, you can do the same thing like a drummer does. So you can close the open hi-hat by just playing a close hi-hat. So you can do things like this. Okay, so these, they cannot play at the same time. They're exclusive. And most drum libraries have this feature. Next we have the crashes. So they leave on C sharp and A, just right here. And we also have the rides that leave on D sharp, F and B. And of course we have the toms, and the toms spread depending on the library from F to D. So, the white keys. And we also have a china here. Okay, and I would say these are the most common things that you will need. You know, you also have a splash here, but these are the main elements, so I would totally start with those. Let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in me extending the entire GM mapping protocol, but these are what you will need like 99% of the time. Everything else, you know, you can program it or you can play it at a later stage when you're producing. And I don't think that the people that designed the GM mapping, they did it by accident. This is very cleverly designed. It's designed so that you can play a drum kit with your hands on the keyboard in real time. There are many ways to do it and there's no right or wrong. I'll tell you which one I found that works really, really well. And this is placing your hands like this. So what do I have here? I have my kick drum here with my middle finger. Then I have my snares with my index and thumb. And then I have the hi-hats here, here on these three fingers. And then my crutch here. And the toms are like right here. So I can go slide here and play the toms. Let's play a very simple rhythm now. So let's start with just kick and snare. I just need one hand for this. And now, hi-hats. Now, once you get the hang of it, you will find that you will feel more comfortable creating variations in the rhythm, going a little bit faster, don't go for speed. That's the number one rule. Don't go for speed when you're starting out. Just start. Try ballad first. Or try 6-8. And when you feel comfortable, try adding an open 
hi-hat. So again, the position is like this. You start like this. And on the Yamaha keyboards, because I've been using Yamaha for ages, the kick drum is extended to A. And you had more elements here. You had like a roll here, which is really cool. And you can do some very interesting things. But the newer libraries don't tend to have this. So I tend to go like this. So again, you start like this and then you're ready to go. Now, do you want to do like a crash? Okay, and then you can start speeding up when you get comfortable, but only when you get comfortable. You should make this like a second nature. Okay, I'm here, boop. You know, I don't have to look. See that? I just, I don't need to look when I'm playing drums. You know, you should get to that stage even by playing slowly, you know, very slowly. And then... Now, check this out. See what I did there? I moved my hand from here to there. Why? That's what I love about the GM protocol. See, when you play here, you're actually acting like a real drummer. You have your kick drum, your snare, and then your hi-hat, right? But when you want to move to the rides and the crashes and all these things and you want to play there, guess what? You can't really play the hi-hat. I mean, some drummers are very, very good and they can do crazy stuff. But most of the times you're not going to have a hi-hat pattern and, you know, like a ride pattern at the same time. So you won't have this... That never happens, and it's messy, and it's wrong, and that gives it away that it's fake drums if you do a production that has something like this. You know, see? The GM mapping prevents you from making these mistakes. So now, let's say I want to move from my hi-hats to my rides. The other position is this one. So what am I doing here? Now I'm controlling the crashes. Okay, see, I'm, I'm playing this kind of pattern, and these symbols and whatever other symbols I can have here in between. Sometimes here you have the cowbell, by the way. Basically, all you need to do when you're playing live is you need to switch from here to there. And that needs a little bit of practice, but start slowly and you can start doing this. Again, like I said, it might look like a lot, but you really, really, really don't need to be a piano player to do this because you don't have to worry about notes, you just have to worry about remembering where everything is. Now, toms, I find them to be a very personal thing. Sometimes I just go like this. So I play them with my right hand, but sometimes when I want to do like really fast tom rolls, I use both my hands. So I just escape from right here from the kick drum and I go... Okay, I go to the tom area. And, and actually that's a good stage to show you how you can learn how to do these really fast repetitions. So now let's talk about repetitions. Repetitions are really important when it comes to programming toms or programming snares, of course. And this is the one thing that you actually need to practice a little bit, right? This is not easy, but it's not something that you can't do. It just needs a little bit of practice. In order to do repetitions, grab a snare, like here, 
And then you can start the easy way. The easy way is to do it using two different keys. And here I have this snare, and here I have this snare. So I can start doing this. you can start introducing dynamics as well. Now sometimes I like to do it with one hand, but this is a little bit of a pianist technique. You know, it might be difficult if you're not a pianist, so you can start doing this. Same with the toms. Do a run like this. And now I'm doing it fast, but you will do it at your own pace. You will do it like this. Okay, then start doing it really quietly. And if you have a nice library, this will help a lot. Then you can start introducing accents to your playing. So let's try this with this run of toms again. Exaggerate at first, you know, just feel the... Or just do the accent on the other hand. And the same thing with snares. You know, start doing things like alternate between snares and toms. And again, do it slowly. Now, one of the things that can give away fake drums is the lack of dynamics. And that's the thing that when you do finger drumming, it's going to sound so much better if you do it right. Because program drums, you have to go for every single note and change the dynamics and, you know, come up with something that's interesting. But it's always, I feel it's always a little bit less good than if you actually play your drums. This is one of the things that you know, you'll feel blessed if you know how to do finger drumming. Because, let me show you, if you program these drums, they will sound like this. You know, they will sound a little bit like everything is 127, and then you have to go and change the velocities, you know how this thing goes. But, if you start programming your drums by playing them, let's say I want to start with a verse. You know, I can go a little bit quieter, the snare, the kick, and then if I move to the chorus, you know, you can do crescendos, you can do nibinuendos, you can do like really nice punchy breaks and stuff, or you can do accents. Or you can do, you know, you can accent exactly how you feel because you feel the rhythm, you feel the beat. And you can do stuff like this that actually add interest to your arrangements. They make your arrangements sound dynamic. And then when you add compression to all this, it sounds like a much more, I won't say a real drummer, but you know, like it sounds closer to real drums. Finger drumming will always give you some variation when it comes to dynamics, especially if you use a velocity sensitive keyboard, which it goes without saying you need that. But the other thing that you need to take care of is also the ghost notes. Okay, this is a little bit more advanced, but I'm going to start with a very simple example so that I can show you how you can do this, okay? I'm going to start with a very simple pattern again. And now I'm going to start introducing some ghost notes. See? And I can do swing as well. On the ghost note. 
and you see all these rhythmic variations that I have there as well, this is really hard to program on a drum editor or a key editor. It's of course possible, totally possible, but it will take you a long, long time rather than just going and it's more fun. Like I said, don't expect to play like this when you start. When I started, I was terrible, terrible. But it doesn't take a long time to get used to this. Okay, so what I'm doing here, this is one of the things that, again, it's a little bit more of a pianist technique. I'm using the same key, see, for repetition, for the kick drum. So I'm going like this. So what am I doing? I'm using these two fingers and and the moment I lift my finger, the other one hits the same key again. Now, like I said, hammer graded, weighted keyboards make this really hard. This is something that pianists do on real pianos. If you have a synth action keyboard, it's actually much easier. Check it out. You still need to practice but then you can do double kicks very, very easily. That's why I said if you're starting out, prefer a synth action key bed because these make it harder. It's not impossible though. So there you go guys, this is the technique that I've been using for the past, I don't want to exaggerate, but maybe 25 years when it comes to playing drums on the keyboard. And I find that when programming drums, this is an invaluable technique because it allows you to do more natural parts. It's more fun to play the drums rather than just use the mouse all the time. And it's really enjoyable. So I hope you enjoyed as well. I hope you try it out and start finger drumming. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below what you want me to do next. Hit the like button please, yes, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel because this is very important, it really helps me make videos like this, and the most important thing, share this video with anyone you know that might find it useful or entertaining. Until next time, groove on!